What's going on everybody? So today on Putin's Fab Shop, we're going to talk about AN fittings and we're not going to go in real detail of AN fittings themselves. I'm going to show you a technique that I just figured out that works for me when I was building the fuel lines for the travel all project. Um, if you don't have the right tools to do this stuff, maybe it'll get you out of a pinch too. Let's get started. So I got a box of AN fittings right here that I ordered a couple kits off eBay. This is this is dash six, which is equivalent to three eighths. I'm building my fuel lines out of this stuff, uh, the supply and return, and my trans cooler lines. So I went to build the uh, fuel lines yesterday, and when I was cutting it, the stuff was fraying. It was a pain in the butt to do. So. Um, I figured out a way that worked for me. I've never seen it done like this before. Now that being said, I've never researched it to see if it's been done before. I have these 180s right here that are hideous. Everything they sent me was supposed to be black and they sent me this. Um, I'm gonna use one of those and show you how I cut and put that fitting on. That saved me yesterday. So let's get going. There are several different techniques out there for cutting this stuff. I wanted to use what I had available without having to wait or go buy anything. So I've seen several where you wrap tape and then you cut it with the die grinder. Well, the issue I was having with that is the ends will still kind of fray, especially when you take the tape off, they want to pull. And then you go to put the fitting on there and the stuff goes everywhere. So if you haven't used one of these before, basically they have these in all different straight, uh, 45s, 90s, and once you cut it, you need to take this piece and push it on there, and it's a counterclockwise motion you need to do to get that on there, and it'll sink down on there so far, about like that, and then you gotta put this in there. Well, the main issue I was having was getting this piece started with those ends starting to fray, and it just makes it real difficult for it to start, as you keep trying to push it on there, it wants to bunch it all back. So I got to thinking, how can I uh, keep that from happening basically? So the first thing you wanna do is put your soft jaws on your vise if you're gonna use the vise. And as you see, I don't have actual soft jaws. I just tape some cardboard. I want that to hold it decent, but I'm not collapsing it. This is 3M super glue. It's real good stuff. Uh, I keep it in my toolbox and pouring it around on our uh, dash six line there. I don't know if this would work with the stainless steel, but since this stuff here is cloth, it does a good job of soaking in there and it holds this stuff together really good. So I've just been taking a uh, piece of tape where I can kind of push that around. I've been using air to help it dry a little quicker. I'm gonna tear me a little piece of tape here and I'm not really relying on that tape to hold that together. Uh, the super glue is gonna do that now the tape for me is just for a guide. It helps me cut straighter. So I was having issues before using the super glue, even just with this 3M masking tape. When I would uh, take it off, is wanting to let the strands start to pull. And it just takes getting a couple of them uh, kind of pulled out to really just throw it all off and make it a pain in the butt for this fitting to go on. So this fitting, when we go to put it on, like I said, we're gonna turn it counterclockwise. So that fitting 
I can already tell you just started a lot easier than any of the black ones did. I don't know if they're manufactured by the same people or not, but like I said, this is just whatever I can get cheap off eBay. Uh, on the black ones, I was having to take my ratcheting wrench and put it on there and doing it that way, I can push against my thumb there and have good leverage for turning that thing. So I don't know if you can really see, but right past those smaller threads in there, uh, there's a lip, an edge, and that's where you got to get that uh, line all the way up to. So we're good there. On this fitting, I've been putting just a little drop of oil on there to kind of lube that up. Start it in there. And I've been tightening it down till it gets tight and then take it till those line up. I took that one a little far, but there it is. So a couple things here. One, drink your water, stay hydrated. Two, uh, if you're actually building a line you'd use when you cut that before you put your fittings on, you definitely want to blow this line out to get all the debris out of there from making the cut. I should have done that, but I was just doing an example and I skipped it. Uh, don't forget to do that. And then three, this is the smoothest AN fitting I've ever had go on. Um, the, all the ones I did yesterday were difficult. I'm sure these are actually manufactured different than the other ones. Um, just from how easy it went on, I'm pretty sure of it. So the ones I did yesterday, I could not build a single fitting. I would attempt to get that piece on there and it would fray like crazy. And I was having to push a lot harder to get it on there. So I didn't build a single fitting successfully without using the super glue. After using the super glue, I didn't have a single one mess up on me. So I know some of you guys are watching this and you probably do this these all the time. And you're like, hey man, you're kind of overcomplicating it. Well, the thing about it is, I don't do it all the time. And there's a lot of people who don't do it all the time. And they may need that one little thing to help them get it done. And for me, it was super glue. So hopefully it helps one person out. If you're having a hard time with it, try it out. Um, if you're having a hard time with the ones that are stainless steel, I'd be curious to see if this works for you. If it will actually get down in there and hold it together. Um, to be able to do the fittings. If you try it out on stainless steel and it works, drop me a comment down below and let me know if you don't mind. And then number four, they make all kinds of special tools for holding this where you don't scuff it up or scar it. Um, I need to put new cardboard on there if I was gonna be doing a lot more fittings because I kind of wore through it, but I didn't really scar up a lot of the fittings on the travel law and I'm not gonna use special wrenches. I'm building a driver, I'm not building a show car. Um, honestly, for me, I just don't really care. But if you do care and you want that stuff to look pretty, you can wrap your wrenches with tape. You can use a nice new wrench that ain't wore out, as long as there ain't no like beveled marks in there. And you can have a little bit better results of not tearing that up. So guys, that's it for this video. Here's, a, here's my supply in return that I built yesterday. And my fuel system consists of a tank seat tank. We do uh, have an inline uh, fuel filter and it's AN all the way up to here where they'll connect to the fuel rails. If you want to check that out, it's a totally separate video. A lot of good stuff in there. So if you're new to the channel, please check out some of the videos where uh, we're building this travel all. It's a pretty cool project and hopefully I have some more videos you guys will enjoy. If you always come back, uh, thank you guys for coming and watching my videos. 
If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop if y'all want to go give me a follow. And I'll see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project.